There was so much of Holy Scripture that we read tonight. So many things that we could talk about. It boggles my mind. But there is one passage I want to call to your attention tonight. And that's actually in the very first of the 12 Scripture readings. It's in the Gospel of John. It's the Lord Jesus at the Last Supper. And he's carrying on a conversation with the disciples. And Philip asked, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus responds by saying, Philip, have I been with you this long and you don't know that when you've seen me, you've seen the Father? So if we want to know what God is like, who God is, all we have to do is look at the face of Christ. Look to Christ and you will see who God is. And very specifically tonight, we see Christ as the King of glory. In other words, he was crucified as the King of Israel. And so he was. But he's also the King of the world. He's also the King of the universe. But most of all, he is the king of glory. He is God's presence walking on earth. So for us, we have to remember what it is that's taken place tonight. People sometimes have said to me, I don't believe in a loving God. I don't believe that God loves us, that he loves the human race that he pays any attention to us, even if he exists. Tonight, when you see Christ hanging on the cross, you've seen God. And you know what the love of God is. Because Christ dies on the cross for all of us. For all of us, yes, but each one of us individually. Each one of us personally. And that's important to remember. Many years ago, oh my gosh, 40 years ago now, when I was a deacon at the Archdiocese in New York, I met a man whose name was Nicholas Gage. And he wrote a book that was a bestseller way back when. And it was called Eleni. And the book was about his mother, among other things. And in that book, and you have to remember, he was a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. In that book, he tells the story of how he ends up in the United States. He talks about the war between reds and whites in Greece after the Second World War. In other words, we Greeks weren't content just to fight the Second World War, we wanted to fight each other as well. So communism and non-communists fought a terribly bloody war. And in that war, the village that Mr. Gage was from, in that village, the communists practiced what in Greek we would call the pedomazoma. In other words, the taking of children, and in that time, in that period, shipping them off to Russia. So the communists had taken his family's village. His father was already in the United States trying to get his family over here, but could not because of the war that had broken out. So instead of allowing her children to be sent away and never to be seen again, she decided she would sell everything she had, everything. And she would pay someone to get her children out, out of the village and across the border so that they would be safe and ultimately they could join their father in America. Well, she did that, but she was caught. 
She was caught. And the communists decided they would execute her. And so she was shot to death. Now, Mr. Gage wrote this book because he had so much fury in him over this that he wanted to find the man who had killed his mother responsible for giving the order. And he was going to go and kill him himself. And he was an investigative journalist. He won the Pulitzer Prize for his investigations of the mafia in New York. So he put all of his finely honed investigative skills to discovering where this man was. And he went to Greece. He found him. And he was going to kill him. He knocked on the door of his little house. The man opened the door. And Mr. Gage, all of a sudden, realized there stood before him an 85-year-old man. There stood before him someone who was guilty of a terrible crime, but standing before him, he knew that his mother would never want him to do what he was planning to do before. He knew that. So when I met him at the Archdiocese of New York, and I had a chance to sit down with him, I asked him, do you get the faith? Do you get Jesus? Do you get our orthodoxy? And without a beat, he said, yes, of course I do, deacon. Of course I do. He said, I know that Christ died for me just like my mother did. He gets it. He gets it. And that's what you have to get as well. That Jesus does not die for the whole human race and exclude you. He does die for the whole human race. Everybody who's ever lived before and after him. But he's died for all of you here tonight as well. Each one of you individually. Each one of you personally. So that your sins can be forgiven and you can move forward beyond the grave to eternal life. That's what tonight is all about. So when you come forward in a few moments to kiss the cross once again and go home tonight, remember, Christ, the King of glory, is hanging on the cross for you. God bless you, everyone. Good night. We remind you tomorrow morning, good for all.